I wanna to talk to you about a house that I built that's gone net zero. This house behind me is one that my company built with local architect Scott Ginder of Forgecraft Architecture and Design. And there's really four things that we did on this house that got us to net zero. So let me give you the how-to behind the scenes on really how we got there. The first thing that we did on this house was we really focused on design. It's incredibly important to hire an architect that understands how their design is gonna impact the energy efficiency of the house. Scott did a really good job of designing a beautiful house that really is architect actually very striking. It's not a particularly large house. This is about a 2,000 square foot house. So he kept it compact. He really designed the spaces to work well. And the other thing he did was he limited the amount of glass that he used on this house. You know, if you think about glass, it's typically about R2 for a square foot of glass. And if you compare that to his walls or his roof line that are super insulated, you really need to limit the amount of glass that you're gonna use on your houses. The second thing that we did on this house was we focused on air sealing. You know, air sealing has been um, kind of the stepchild to insulation for many years. But as the passive house standard from Germany has started to take hold here in America, I think more and more builders have realized, boy, it makes a big difference to not have that air leaking into my house. The third thing we did was really very insulated walls and roof line. We used two by six advanced framing on this house. Then on the outside of those walls, we used three quarters of an inch of rigid foam. At the roof line, we used open cell spray foam to make a conditioned attic. And then on top of that, we've got two inches of rigid foam on the roof deck and then our TPO roof. The fourth thing we did was really focus on the design of the mechanical systems. No matter where you are in the country, your HVAC system typically accounts for about 50% of your energy use. So really getting a great design on your mechanicals, making sure your, especially your air conditioning and this hot, humid climate of ours in Texas is designed well and not over-designed, that's very important. We worked with the folks at Positive Energy here in Austin to ensure a really very good design. We also utilized Mitsubishi's VRF, variable refrigerant flow technology. So we've got really top of the line mechanicals on this house. Lastly, we added the solar cells. As you can see, we've got a 7.2 kW system on this house to get us the net zero. We covered a decent amount of the roof on this house. And the thing I like about adding solar later, like we did on this house, is solar can really be bolted on to just about any house, if you think about it ahead of time in the design phase. So we did the air sealing, we did the insulation, we designed it well, we put in good mechanical mechanicals and Scott actually added the solar after the fact on this house. Let's go inside and show you a few more things that we did on this house to get us to net zero. I'm with Scott inside the foyer of this house and he's going to give us another tip on how to get to net zero. 20% of a home's annual electric usage is devoted to heating up hot water. We can reduce that and get closer to net zero by installing a heat pump water heater. Yeah, Scott, these are great, especially for houses in the southern U.S. We're taking the air out of the house and its heat. We're dumping that into the tank to make hot water. And the byproduct of that process goes into that silver duct right there. We're talking about cool, dehumidified air, which is dumping into the kitchen. And the big benefit, as we're talking about net zero, is that these are going to use one-third less electricity than a standard electric tank. And Matt, one of the other reasons why I like this heat pump water heater is it's very quiet. It's running right now, it's making hot water, it's blowing cool air into the other room, and it's, it makes less noise than your typical air conditioner. These are great units. If you'd like more information on heat pump water heaters or the other ways that we got to net zero, visit my blog at mattreisinger.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.